Uh, hello and welcome. Uh, we are very happy to see you already for the third time and there are some uh, returning familiar faces. Uh, so the first two warm-up events were academic breakfasts and uh, this one uh, is more about the hackathon itself and how to win it, uh, hopefully for you. So those who are watching it here in real time on Zoom uh, or Facebook live stream, uh, you have the best advantage and those who are waiting uh, listening to recording uh, of course you will also record everything but uh, for those who are in person you will be able to also ask questions after the presentations so we'll start again with a quick overview of the hackathon itself uh, so registrations are open for only 16 uh, more hours uh, so if you haven't yet definitely press the green button and join uh, the event venue is Riga Motor Museum. Uh, it's a really nice place where you can also see some exhibits of cars that uh, have crashed, <laughs> some that haven't, and also there is a, a road safety measure exhibition where you can see how, for example, the uh, car uh, bumpers, etc., have evolved over time. Uh, maybe it gives you some inspiration, so when you arrive, feel free to arrive a bit earlier and have some time to go around the exhibition area. Uh, the schedule itself, so we start on uh, Friday uh, with the participant arrival and registration. So up at five o'clock, you can already arrive. Uh, at six, we are opening the event. And at seven, there will be a masterclass on creativity and innovation methods. Uh, after that, we are starting the countdown timer. And the first activity will be validation and confirmation of teams. So you can team a match already when you register. You can do it in this last week. We will share a Miro platform where you can add comments for teammates. And you can also do it on site uh, if you want to find some extra members. It's also allowed for teams to join together. So if you are two small teams and you decide to kind of join your forces, it is of course allowed, but you have to take in account that the price money will probably need to be uh, split among more uh, people. Uh, so the next um, day, which is the main uh, working day, uh, is um, Saturday, we will start with office yoga, morning office yoga, uh, and, and afterwards there will be the first uh, serious touch point with mentors. This is the place where you will need to prepare one minute presentation or 30 seconds, like very, very quick presentation where you tell what is the problem you are solving, uh, preferably based in data, uh, and also your uh, expected uh, solution for it. And then it will proceed with a short consultation with mentors. Then we will have a prototyping session. And afterwards, uh, in the middle of the day, we will do a presentation masterclass for team leaders. Uh, at four o'clock, we will have consultations with mentors. And at six, we are already ending the workshop uh, and you can continue working. Uh, for both days, there is an option to stay uh, at the museum. But unfortunately, as it's a museum, there are no showers or sleeping venues. So if you prefer to really work undisturbed, it is possible as it's done in the hackathons. But um, uh, preferably, you yeah, yeah. so it's, it's your choice. We will have a little form where you can mark if you prefer. Uh, plan to stay over or you plan to return the next morning and the presentation day uh, is on the Sunday morning uh, so you will have short three minute presentations and uh, one or two questions from the jury. I would really recommend using both uh, meeting points with mentors uh, at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day on the uh, second day as that's your opportunity to kind of also give more information as jury also some of the jury members will be mentoring uh, so it's it's a good opportunity to give them more information as three minutes is very limited time. Uh, so these are your jury mentors over the last week. They might still update a little bit. So the higher the person is, is the higher chance they will be a jury member. Uh, and uh, so the full event price pool, of course, is 6,000 euros divided by three places. Uh, and the evaluation criteria, uh, so the first one is innovation based in real world data, which means that you have to have an innovative solution and it has to be somewhat based on data. So it's not uh, something that you in in invite out of out of blue. Uh, the second is progress during the hackathon. I would say this is one that usually decides whether the team wins or it just gets good marks because uh, jury usually looks at how you perform during the whole event. So being in person, asking questions, being active and showing some progress when the mentor gives you a suggestion sometimes helps to get more points here uh, feasibility and impact on traffic quality so when we started this hackathon this is the core reason so at the end of the day this quantitative uh, output is basically does your solution help to reduce lethal fatalities uh, and and uh, if, if, if the answer is yes then you will score very high 
development points here, uh, and also that that's the, basically the fourth criteria: potential to reduce lethal and serious accidents. Feasibility is more about whether it's implementable. Sorry, I mixed these two up, but they are both important. Of course, all, all the categories give you ten points, so it's uh, but but uh, overall, like when jury looks at them, some of them everyone gets a bit of points, and some is really hard to uh, um, compete. And scalability is, is if this is scalable. So, but the last um, time Yuri said in his presentation that it is sometimes not that valuable to create one safe zone. Uh, it's more to look in the traffic as a general thing. So this scalability means if you can implement this uh, solution in wider scale, uh, can it be also maybe transferred to other countries uh, as the aim is not only improve road safety in Latvia, but improve it generally in Europe. But unfortunately, Latvia and Baltic states is in a very bad position. So we start here. Uh, so the disciplines, uh, you are not tied to one discipline. You can select several and match them, but it's something when you think about your solution, these are some of the places where uh, innovation might help. For example, uh, if you want to reduce little accidents, one thing you can work with uh, road safety or how the data is gathered, or you can also look at how fast the emergency response can get to the accident sites, etc. cetera. Uh, so looking at your professional background and your team, you can choose and then look at these segments. So there is data science and analysis, uh, behavioral science, so social campaigns, social engagement, uh, smart infrastructure and urban design, uh, vehicle safety related innovations, emergency medical response, uh, with vulnerable road users and micromobility, uh, safe and sustainable environmental design, so more planning, also oriented solutions, and uh, policy innovations and cross-border collaboration, which is basically some updates to the laws or, or maybe some platforms where a foreign exchange can happen better. Uh, so about location, we already mentioned, it's Riga Motor Museum. We will send you a map where to park the cars if you are coming by a car or what public transportation to use. Uh, of course, drive safely when you arrive. And uh, so this is a registration form. Hopefully all of you already have done it. We see really a lot of, <laughs> we even thought maybe we should close earlier, but uh, I think we will keep it up for the <laughs> promised time. And uh, we will go to the QA at the end. So we will go to these questions and then you will be able to answer your questions. So I have taken uh, a lot of time for this <laughs> introduction part. I will now give the floor uh, to our great moderator today. Uh, and that is Sigita Purona Sida from Central Statistics. Bureau of Latvia. We are really happy to partner with the Central Statistics Bureau as uh, we want your innovations to be data-based. Uh, and uh, since 1st of November, she's responsible for transport and mobility statistics. So welcome, Sigita. Thank you, Matis. Yes, uh, this is the third event and uh, I'm really happy that uh, actually this is uh, the first hackathon in, uh, in many ways. The first hackathon uh, in Baltic states related with this topic, road safety. The first hackathon, what will be really database, let's say, but it's not like keen just to, 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 to resolve some uh, maybe data methodology problems. The first hackathon where we are inviting uh, all age people to participate. We, we, we targeted a few schools and uh, hopefully there will be uh, uh, children to participate too because everybody, uh, all of us, we are on the roads and, uh, on, and for all of us, this is uh, quite an uh, important topic. And uh, to give a little overview how uh, went our academical breakfast this year because this is our uh, annual event. Uh, yes, in first two sessions, uh, we cover uh, two big topics. One was the about the myth, uh, myth uh, in 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 road safety uh, world. Yes, what are the myths that uh, drivers are not very uh, skilled? That's why uh, accidents happening, or maybe some infrastructure, or maybe limitations are too tight, or what. Um, other things. And uh, last week, not it was this week, Monday, uh, we met and uh, there were um, uh, the, our topic uh, cover why uh, heavy road accidents happening and we uh, cover like four key uh, components, infrastructure, equipment, uh, traffic and user behavior. And we met and really uh, interesting speakers, Justina Hudenko from Riga Technical University. We met uh, uh, Dita Zemita, my colleague, who, who shared about new data, about uh, how uh, traffic changing because of uh, increasing of once of uh, 
of logistic of goods and 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 and, and these kind of services. Uh, we met Evelina from Transportation and Communication Institute, and uh, today we're meeting again with Eva from uh, Athens, from Greece. And uh, last week she was the one who gave, gave us uh, the key figures about uh, accidents, transport accidents in uh, Europe, and how Latvia looks. And uh, honestly, Latvia looks not very well <laughs> and, and today the first uh, who will proceed about more uh, maybe practical things for hackathon uh, participants uh, this is uh, what kind of data you really can uh, use for uh, for your brainstorming to to figure out the, the problem to, to to find the solutions and eva will be the first uh, who will uh, tell us about artificial intelligence and big data for supporting road safety actions. Eva, floor is yours. You're welcome. Thank you very much for, your, for the introduction. I think now you can see my screen, right? Perfect. Um, well, but I, I like the first one more than, than this one, actually. OK, OK. It's Friday. Perfect. Um, well, uh, now thank you very much for the introduction, and I will uh, we will discuss some uh, very interesting points with regards to artificial intelligence and big data in, that we have available in order to support our road safety actions. So, let's begin with. Uh, um, the basic issue that refers to road safety, along with big data, uh, as we all know. Uh, road uh, crashes and uh, road traffic injuries consist the leading cause of deaths for uh, uh, people of all ages. So, um, and actually the number of road fatalities in some countries uh, remains unacceptable, such as in Latvia, unfortunately. So we need to exploit the, the innovative da data-driven solutions that we have av available in order to um, propose solutions and measures in order to improve uh, these bad figures. So we should create a proactive approach in order to address these um, road safety problems, of course, in based, based on the core principle of the safe system approach. And uh, today, with uh, the evolution of technology, we have uh, available a lot of data from smartphones, sensors, or uh, connected objects that uh, can also help. And um, this, uh, we can improve uh, and we can use this data in order to improve road safety, thanks to the progress in computing power, data science, and uh, artificial intelligence. So, uh, the solution is um, clear that we need for new, uh, there is a need for new and big data. There are uh, a lot of new advanced road safety analysis uh, that uh, can be used. And uh, the crucial issues is, uh, and the crucial steps are to identify the main key road risk factors, such as speeding, uh, distraction, uh, um, and non-use of uh, helmet or seat belt, as well as uh, driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs. And then we should address road user behavior and errors, and then um, therefore address uh, uh, proactively critical traffic, infrastructure, and vehicle risk factors. Of course, there is continuous uh, driver support in order to improve driver behavior and develop better road safety culture for all road users. And then uh, we can, um, of course, there are uh, great new potential for uh, public and uh, private road safety decision making at all levels that we should also take into account. So let's have a look on what, what uh, road safety data we have av available. Uh, we, in order to perform our uh, road safety policies and strategies and actions. Of course, we can use fatalities along with their evolution, which is the most important uh, um, in order to assess, uh, in order to improve road safety. We can use exposure indicators along with safety performance measures. 
we should focus on causation and in-depth crash investigations along with health and economic indicators. And of course, particular attention should be given in driver behavior and attitudes along with the road safety rules and regulations and other uh, measurement assessment. But um, the crucial questions and the main points that we should uh, focus on is that do we have the data that we need and then do we need the data uh, we have? These are some points that uh, we need to think about it and um, focus on this. So let's begin with all the data from different sources that we have available to date with uh, the technology and all the artificial intelligence systems, there is a plethora of uh, data sources. And let's begin. And uh, we, we can have different sources from different categories and per different road user uh, types and for all um, uh, users, such as uh, especially for uh, data for vulnerable road users, for professional drivers or for uh, uh, heavy vehicle uh, dr uh, drivers. So let's begin. We have uh, mobile phone data through sensors and uh, network uh, data. We also collect uh, onboard di diagnostic data through vehicles. We also have uh, camera data, not only on vehicle, but also on the road in several cities, operators, or uh, by police. And we also have data from uh, car sharing services, bike sharing services, along with uh, the last uh, uh, years, uh, we also try to collect uh, micromobility data from several uh, applications. And of course, we also have several telematic data that um, from uh, co uh, several companies that can help. We also have private agency sensor data, travel card data. We can use uh, the data that we received from public authorities, uh, uh, other ministries, uh, cities uh, or regions. We also collect uh, weather data uh, or digital map data. And um, lastly, uh, there are also some important data with regards to shared mobility, social, social media data, and research-oriented data. So this was a general overview, and uh, let's have a look in, into more details into three uh, important categories that uh, we need to take into account. Of course, we need to focus on crash data. This is the most important thing. Uh, in order to identify the problems and the problematic areas and see which are the crucial risk factors and indicators. So um, we can collect uh, crash data through instrumented vehicles along with smartphone sensors. There is an easy solution today to collect um, crash data uh, from um, smartphone sensors because we have indicators such as speeding, harsh events like harsh acceleration and harsh braking. We also collect um, driving distraction as well as the conditions uh, of the environment. So these or all, all of these are a very important indicator indicators of risk. Of course, we can use other technologies like automatic uh, crash notification and uh, event data recorders. We can also use street imagery, uh, the, which is um, based on um, vehicle, in order to assess road safety performance with the star rating for roads. And uh, then we can use uh, other drones and satellites that uh, can also help us to capture uh, solutions with increased market penetration and we can use other active safety systems within um, the vehicles such as anti-lock braking system or autonomous emergency braking. All of these were with regards to crash data and then we move on, we move on to geometric data that are also very important especially for crash prediction models and uh, for the road safety assessment techniques. And uh, we can um, 
focus on uh, four uh, main categories of uh, geometric design. We can focus on horizontal and vertical alignment, cross-section elements, roadside conditions, or other road uh, features and equipment. And uh, the main point that uh, we should uh, identify is, is that uh, there is a, a, a big correlation between uh, geometric de de design data and crash data. And this is the fundamental aspect. And we need to combine all this data in order to have quantitative uh, road safety analysis and the best results. And uh, of course, we can use other potential road geometric design data uh, from um, national road authorities, authorities databases or for um, high definition maps or for um, open GIS road uh, geometry data. All of these are available and we can use them. And then the most important and the most easy way to collect data is from telematic solutions that we have available for fleet management, for um, usage-based insurance, for eco-driving, as well as for safe driving coaching. For the, uh, with the evolution of technology, we can collect telematics data, especially based on onboard diagnosis, OBDs, that uh, we have available inside, equipped inside uh, the vehicle. And um, we can use uh, the technological advances through uh, the smartphone. And um, actually, uh, today we have uh, a lot of, we can receive a lot of driver behavior telematics metrics, as we said before, with regards to several um, uh, indicators and parameters like uh, the total duration or the total dis distance uh, of um, driving. We can collect information about road network used through GPS uh, position. We can also collect fuel consumption uh, or uh, seatbelt wearing along with uh, information about the situation uh, of a driver such as if uh, it, he was uh, drunk or um, we can also detect fatigue or uh, his driver state. So the most important thing that uh, we should uh, take into account is that uh, um, there is a combination of artificial intelligence and big data that can help us uh, to promote road safety. So we can exploit, exploit all the opportunities, opportunities that we have available through um, the sensors and systems. And all of these can be combined through a proactive management in order to improve traffic safety. And um, there are some basic steps. The most important is to identify the high risk locations and then to um, help us to, um, uh, of course, uh, AI can help us um, for, uh, to, uh, to recognize some basic patterns uh, with regards to the driver and uh, as well as uncover new crash prone road configurations. But um, recent uh, developments in the field of uh, so-called explainable AI uh, can also help us uh, to cope with the challenge of uh, the black box phenomenon, which is uh, also uh, essential. But uh, lastly, we should take into account some uh, challenges that we also faced with big data. And we should think about it uh, with regards to several critical issues, with regards to punishment versus positive feedback of big data, if uh, we will have a regulatory or um, voluntary data, we should focus and we should assure the anonymization because it uh, may, may increase the penetration. Uh, we should uh, focus on the ownership of data and think about the exploitation of data. And then um, another crucial aspect is the sharing of all this data, um, which should be aligned with the EU legislation. And lastly, to conclude this presentation, of course, we have a variety of um, that data sources um, and big data procedures um, that can solve us, um, the, um, that can help us to identify the problems and to select and implement the optimal solutions. 
show um, new found net present value in road safety data is available for early problem detection. And um, we can also um, support uh, uh, customized decisions on each level. There is, uh, of course, um, there are, of course, a lot of safety AI applications through vehicle telematics uh, crash uh, analysis data that we can use. But there are some unexplored directions that remain in several uh, road safety aspects that we need to be very careful um, for this. But uh, the main uh, issue is that uh, if we combine big data and along with artificial intelligence, then um, this uh, will be a, a, an efficient catalyst for achieving vision zero road fatalities by 2050. And this is uh, the most crucial point in order to have uh, zero, zero deaths. So thank you very much from your attention. These were all from my side. Thank you, Eva. Uh, from one side, you, you gave great, really, overview. Uh, what scientific scientific world using for uh, for assessing uh, transport systems and accidents from other side you really scare our, our participants <laughs> because maybe they have idea that they have to gather these data <laughs> for hackathon needs i will calm down you uh, after a few seconds but thanks a lot, Eva. And actually, the great news for uh, for uh, those who are today uh, watching us that you can uh, already meet Eva. You will meet her in Riga, and she will be the one of the mentors. Please try to to gather with her and to use her knowledge because she has really amazing and deep knowledge about the the topic. And uh, she will be one of the jury. And yes, uh, that's why be, please uh, watch around and, and really be active and, and use the opportunity to consult with Eva. Thank you, Eva. But now I have to calm down our participants because <laughs> yes, uh, if you were really, uh, um, if you're really excited about this topic, of course, you can go this way and to, to work on on uh, on scientific research and to gather the data but uh, for instance i know that the uh, country is struggling in in the governmental level sometimes to, to to gather this kind of data like you mentioned there are a lot of challenges but my colleague Anse Tserinja, she uh, prepared something very 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 practical it's data sets what uh, participants of hackathon can use immediately and actually today is the last day when you can apply for particular data sets if you see that there is is necessity to combine some data for you, uh, then uh, you welcome. This is the last day when we are welcome to, 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 to give your uh, requests. Uh, we will try to do our best. Of course, if you will ask us to do a census on the roads, no. <laughs> but uh, uh, in any case, we have some opportunities still to prepare some uh, additional data sets. Ante, the floor is yours, please. Uh, Thanks, Sigita. Thanks, Eva. Eva scared me too. Uh, my data will look like a little sister from kindergarten <laughs> on this, uh, on a, if we look at Eva. So uh, I'm Anze. I'm from Central Statistical Office of Latvia. Uh, our, our days are spent uh, elbows deep in data. We prepare data to help the public make uh, the data-based decisions. Um, recently, more and more data uh, are opened and uh, more and more data are valued. Uh, we often heard that the data are gold and this gold are everywhere. You just need to look for it, find it, and... Uh, um, learn how to use it. Uh, that's uh, that's um, and um, open data is uh, sufficient to confirm or reject the first assum assumptions. Of course, using data from reliable sources. If after the hackathon you will have any ideas where you need uh, more detailed data, you can come to us and ask for it. Uh, we will try to help. I don't uh, 
know if we can, but if we can, we will help. And if we can in uh, uh, all, if it's legal and if we have the data. So uh, we have brainstormed uh, in our office too about the themes in Hackathon. And I have listed the available data that we will have to try to use if we will, uh, um, if we will, um, participate in hack hackathon so uh yes i will show you i didn't uh, even <laughs> do it uh not all available data are here here is just a subjective list uh, what uh, what we can uh, imagine what to use so i hope you now see yes we see your screen Okay, really good. So we can start with first. If we talk about uh, traffic safety, then we need to talk about black points. After that, there are traffic intensity. Uh, does the number of accidents increase as the traffic intensity increase? I don't know, but you can check. So we, after that, we have repair works. Do repair works correlate with accidents or traffic intensity? Uh, after that is mobility of Latvian population. Uh, how do people move by how much uh, movement patterns of the population? This is data from Sampley survey. Uh, these data are from Last survey was in 2021, so not the newest data, but uh, something to start. After that, we have accidents. Uh, I think there, we don't need any explanation. After, since I am from social statistics field, so uh, population in grid cells, uh, it's uh, maybe you can connect it to traffic intensity and look for correlation. Okay, after that, there are passenger traffic. This is uh, summary data. So after that, we have transport data. Uh, yes, uh, maybe you can study the car fleet in Latvia and how it correlated. Uh, with number of accidents, I don't know. Uh, then we have household incomes and uh, expenses for transport, repair, and uh, purchase. This is two sample survey, and this is a uh, quite old survey. Uh, it's from 2019, but uh, newest data we will have just in 2020. Sixth, yes, uh, next year we will have this sample survey. Uh, so please participate if you have the invite invitation to do it. So after that, we have electric charging infrastructure. Oh no, then we have addresses of educational institution. How these data, data correlate with traffic intensity. Then we have again population data. This is uh, population density. Uh, and after that, we have population, profession, and industries. Uh, how do changes in traffic industries affect other industries? Uh, so we have public, public transport data, uh, bus stops, railway stops, uh, bus roads. So you can try to uh, use uh, population data in grids and make some decisions or, or conclusions. And then we have traffic jam map. If we talk about uh, programs, then again, there are no one program that suits for everyone, for uh, all. Uh, 
Excel is most uh, widely heard tool, I think, uh, when we talk about tables and graphs. It's a uh, user-friendly interface. It's uh, it's perfect for uh, non <clears throat> uh, for less technical people to make uh, first uh, assumptions. So then we have Power BI. I'm sorry, then we have Power BI. Uh, it's a business analytics solution that allows you to combine different data source, analyze them, and present data analysis through visualization, visualization reports, dashboards. If we talk about more serious processing and analyze, uh, then we should mention R, R and Python. Those two programs are open source and widely used in data science. Uh, and uh, last one is SQL. It's database uh, program which uh, stored databases. So, and then there are dots because the programs are a lot and you need to use and find uh, the one for you. Uh, and I don't know, I wish you luck and let the best win. Somehow your voice was <laughs> worried, but yes, I believe they will manage. And uh, the guys, what uh, this presentation will be stored yes. uh, and will, will be available for participants. You can use those links. And like I mentioned, you can still uh, request the data, but you see it could be useful for, uh, for you, for your team. And don't be scared, please. If you know Excel, use Excel. Just when you're opening the huge data set, then you understand, no, Excel will not, <laughs> will not hold it. Yes, and then, then maybe use another data. And uh, um, my suggestion actually is, uh, as I know, my uh, colleagues will participate in, uh, in a hackathon. Maybe you can check it out, uh, the guys from statistics, and just to be friendly with them and they can uh, help somehow. And uh, I'd love to invite to, to turn on camera for one more mentor. It's Ruta Beinare from uh, Central Statistics uh, Bureau to my colleague. And uh, you can try to catch her in the Saturday. Um, if you want to prepare the great uh, visual presentation, especially about the data, very smart way, data analytics, this is she. She is not working so much with uh, data processing. Uh, that's why I mentioned other colleagues, yes, but uh, Ruta Beinare, uh, I, I hope uh, everybody sees yeah, you. Hello, you can, yes, yes. <laughs> hello, yes you can say hi. Yeah, you will meet her in uh, in Saturday too. And uh, yes, please use the opportunity. She will be around there, and uh, she can uh, she can consult about the how to prepare good visualization related with data analysis. Okay, but now uh, before we are moving for very uh, uh, before I'm giving the floor for the king of the hackathons, how he loves to <laughs> to be <laughs> named Matis. No, I have uh, one more colleague. Uh, um, uh, Diana Radzinha, and uh, she will give maybe some uh, inspiration talk to participants because uh, recently she was the part of the team who won the uh, one of the hackathons. Diana, the floor is, is yours now. Hi. Hello, everybody. Uh, so I can, uh, yes, my name is uh, Diana. And uh, recently in September, I took a part uh, in a hackathon, which was named as Open Data Innovation and Grow. And uh, it was organized by the Ministry of Smart Administration and Regional uh, Development. So we were uh, in my team, um, strange uh, people. We didn't know each other, only two of them who had uh, an idea as uh, my digital twin in the health. So it was something uh, very uh, innovative. And uh, we won a prize in a category of artificial intelligence solutions. So, and uh, I prepare a little uh, tips. So what helped us to win this prize? 
maybe it can help you as well when you will do this uh, hackathon. So I can share uh, some small presentation. So the inspirational, can you see it? Yes, yes, we see your presentation. Yes. So how to win a hackathon? <laughs> so I think uh, the main uh, formula for success, of course, is the team. So uh, yes, so the teamwork. So what means the teamwork? Uh, the teamwork means that uh, in your team, you, each of you, you have your own resources, your own knowledge, and uh, the field where you are the best. So in the teamwork, you have to split the works because the time is very limited and uh, you need to collaborate with each other. So if someone is not coping or you, you feel that, no, I cannot do uh, full of uh, my work, so you need to ask also help. So this is also the team. So because uh, when we were um, making the project and we were looking for information, so my field was uh, collecting data. But sometimes when I couldn't understand to what kind of data we need and how we will use it. So my team members who wasn't professionals in, in, in data, they helped me to understand. So it means that you are you don't have to be afraid to ask help from your team members because you don't have a lot of time so you need to use each other so and uh, also what uh, you need to remember that uh, in such a short time you cannot be perfect it is not possible so don't uh, gain the perfection uh, your aim to must be the progress, the process. You have to enjoy it and uh, you have to look what the best is for your team, what the best solution can you get and how to correctly and understandable explain it to the jury. So how to win the hackathon in the end? Because uh, the most important in the hackathon is the presentation. So the end and the presentation. So you need to a little bit uh, walk in the shoes of the jury, if I can say so. So you, you, you need to know who is the jury and you need to understand what kind of questions they will ask about your uh, idea and what is important. The firstly, you need to know what is important for this hackathon. So you need to read <laughs> all the rules and uh, what is expected in the end. So please focus on that. And uh, after, so when you made the presentation, be ready for different questions. And uh, this is the main thing when you think, oh, in the jury will be Eva. So what was she speaking about? What is important for her? So try to figure out what kind of question according to your idea she will ask and be prepared. And um, one of the success, what we did, uh, a little bit different than the other teams was that uh, in the end, the uh, presentation was presented by one person of our team uh, and uh, all other teams made the same, but uh, in the process when were the questions and answers uh, from all the other teams was the same member who was answering all the questions. We did a little bit different. When uh, presentation was ended, these five minutes, all of us, we went uh, to stay uh, aside of our team member who were presented, presenting, and uh, we were taking uh, these questions on ourselves. It was some questions about the data, and I knew that my team member, he doesn't know anything about data because it was the, my responsibility. I was answering the question the same way about the artificial intelligence. Uh, so the one who was making this um, prototype, 
they were taking uh, and giving the answers uh, to the question was according to this uh, their field. So this is also one of the tips uh, which we did differently than others. And I think it was also uh, quite a big success because we could answer professionally. Not only one person was thinking what kind of answers uh, should be in this short time, but we were supporting our team. And so here are some tips. So, so be team, uh, enjoy, enjoy event, uh, add a splash of create, uh, creativity to your work. Uh, don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. So this is the process when you can learn something, not only about the data, about the uh, uh, traffic but uh, this is the way how you can learn something about the collaboration and compromise uh, making in the team uh, be original so i wish you don't be afraid to stand out and if you stand out uh, this is also one step to success so i think i hope this a little bit will help you to uh, go a little bit forward to your success and uh, win in this hackathon. Thank you, Diana. Actually, I totally agree with a few of your tips that you gave to the teams. As a, uh, I participated in a few hackathons and I saw uh, and I, I was the mentor of the hackathons and, and you are right, yes, that the few things is like the team really teams together this is very important and everybody knows about the uh, about the topic and everybody support each other this is very important and actually uh, it doesn't matter then you win or no everybody wins in this situation <laughs> yes if you enjoy but yes let's uh, wish good luck thank you for you i hope you are participating in this hackathon too <laughs> i don't know i didn't we'll check see. the participants <laughs> list uh, actually, Matis mentioned that uh, we have huge interest and uh, really, if you consider to, to, to register, do it because we have just, uh, uh, I don't know how many spots left, but uh, now it's like it will be competition about the places in the, in the hackathon. And now I, I, I would love to go uh, to give the floor for Matis and he has uh, many roles. <laughs> actually, he's representative, representative from Riga Technical University. He's the architect, he's the hackathon guru, he's the, the hiking guru. I don't know how many roles you have. You <laughs> go for it and share with people. Yeah, and uh, and uh, but, <laughs> but you, you, yes, you are not the mentor. Uh, people don't approach him. It's not, uh, it's not necessary. No, actually, he can give the the best tips and tricks for for participation in hackathon. Go for it. Yes, so me and Sigit, we are the people who are collecting the mentors for you. Uh, and uh, maybe the best tip I can give you is uh, basically you can steal the mentors. And then the, when we talked with uh, this road safety department and we asked them, uh, and there are some very good questions in the comments that you will address. And one of the best questions when you talk with someone who is uh, kind of the holder of the project, uh, the good question is well, like to ask, what, what's your fear about this, right? Uh, what would you consider a failure? And when we asked this to this uh, road safety department, the board they said that uh, their mo mo biggest fear is that it'll, it'll be just you know talking and no measurable results afterwards uh, and because we, we thought like hey it would be great to have this as an addition that this hackathon continues etc so coming from that perspective uh, when you think about your solution and uh, this impl implementability is something that it is worth thinking about and then uh, how most teams address it usually is that they maybe build a prototype and that we will have a short section on that uh, how to build a prototype but uh, a lot of times it's partnerships and partnerships are extremely strong but then you start cold calling um, the companies like you know maybe you want to collaborate with mobility or car guru etc to build some type of solution and that gives this this credit of implementability because you say, hey, I have this idea and I will partner with this company or this brand and do it. And then it's sometimes hard to reach them. And that's where the mentors really come in because of course, mentor can give you a good advice, but you know, advice is free and <laughs> you can get it a lot of places. Sometimes advice is competing, but you can sometimes just, you know, steal the mentor, like because they represent organizations. A lot of them are sponsors for the event. 
Uh, so in that uh, capacity, try to look at their background, you know, do some research on the mentors uh, and, and try to steal them for your team because mentors can participate also in capacity of helping you implement the solution especially, for example, you don't know how to organize some type of data or you just want to get one data point, etc. It's a good trick. Anyhow, that was a little sidestep. Now we will go to this uh, part in the, the today's uh, workshop where we show you this uh, working table. Uh, some of you wanted something outside of WhatsApp and uh, like this main, like there's a website, but website for participants where you can actually interact with the information and access some data points is here. It, it is getting updated regularly. It's basically one large mirror board. You can uh, access it through this website here. And what you can do here, starting from the top and going to the bottom, uh, is first you can <laughs> stay in touch with our social networks. We put some information there, uh, a link it in the Facebook, etc. There is, for example, now a new innovation group where you can put some links to, and we will also share some links to articles where someone has invented something so you don't invent the wheel again. Uh, so from that, the next most important point is um, basically this team matching part. When you register, you already input this information, but here is an option where you can make it visible for others, because of course we don't share the registration list with with, with others, uh, but here you can voluntarily show that, for example, uh, I made a sample comment under this automotive engineer. For example, I'm saying here a demo comment, I am Matis from Riga Technical University, uh, looking for a teammate uh, to build a glow in the dark scooter. Uh, and, and there I could reply like, hi, I'm Matis Tris, you know, and I I would love to collaborate so you can build a small chat in this Miro environment. It will also be possible to do it inside physically, but if you are, if you want to be prepared, you can start to do it uh, uh, online. So there are comment options available. You can't edit the cards, but you can put comments and that's how you can interact there. Uh, so there are two rows. Uh, one row is for if you are looking for a team member and the other one is if you're a team that is available uh, for, for onboarding more people. Uh, and uh, here, if you already have a team and you want to start going forward, you can already register your team name. For example, here's a demo team rockets. Uh, participants are Yanis, uh, Andra, and Yanis, <laughs> two Yanises, and, and the captain is Matis, for example. So that's how it looks. If you want to already register a team, you basically, or pre register, you can uh, put your name uh, and put your captain's name because that's very important. And then we will check our database if it um, co co correlates. Uh, that's something for very proactive people, it's not required something you can do if you have time. Uh, what you are uh, maybe important to check, maybe you missed some of the warm-up lectures. And uh, this lecture is more like a sum up, more like comments. The real information was in the first two ones. Uh, so where we talked about two very, very important questions. The first one is uh, traffic safety in data, myths and truth. So basically we looked uh, when you think about uh, your innovation, how to say that you are not solving a myth. For example, there was one example that old people cause accidents and um, mentor showed how you can see if it's a real problem uh, or it's a fake problem in a way. Uh, and, and in this capacity, you can also ask that for mentors, of course, but there are some tools and some the typical strategies that uh, and, and some examples that is worth seeing. So presentation from Yuris, definitely check that out if you haven't yet. And the other one was this week in Monday, uh, where we had that topic, why do heavy road accidents occur? So when you ask like, what is something to focus on? Of course, it's little accidents. That's the main thing we are trying to solve. You can try it solved through data, for example, seeing where they happen or seeing how they happen, or maybe the data is not gathered correctly. So innovation can also be in that part, but at the end of the day, uh, the result is very simple. Your solution has to reduce the amount of little accidents on the roads. And here we have three presentations currently and the video. So you can also access the slides on Miram. And then you also can see the roadmap of follow-up activities. It's like a program, but a little bit more stretched out and, and more in detail. So remember to check this Miro board and uh, then there you will have the information. So before we go to the Q&A, I suppose we also give events uh, a few few words about prototyping. During the hackathon, we have we will have a prototyping uh, station where there will be a few 3D printers and, and you can build something. And uh, I think we will give word to Vance from Princeton Innovations to give a short, short overview uh, if you but need Matis, to prototype. Matis, to be, Matis, hmm? I'm curious. I'm really curious because there is uh, someone asking in the questions does Vent Strautman is ever smile? Why? <laughs> he will. He will. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please explain we why people out. ask this question? question for <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, yes. Hello. Uh, thank you all. 
uh, for being here. And uh, yes, thank you for the good question. I'm smiling a lot, but uh, I, I was listening. I was listening. Uh, and that's why I was not smiling. The information was really helpful even for me. And uh, that's why I was not smiling. I was focusing on all of the information. But yes, I'm smiling a lot. And thank you, Matis, for uh, you already told about uh, prototyping, <laughs> almost everything I wanted to say. Uh, but yes, uh, I will be happy to see you there on site in Ariga Motor uh, Museum next week. And there will be a prototyping station when, where you can meet me. I will help you with the tools, with the advices, maybe uh, if you will need uh, with, a, with some a little cardboard, scissors, glue, or, or, or something else. If needed, there will be also 3D printers. I hope there will be two or more of them to make a small and easy print, uh, quick print elements if needed. Of course, it, it will not be possible to print uh, some <laughs> huge buildings or something else, but uh, small quick prints and uh, do the quick prototyping uh, test ideas something like rapid prototyping or quick prototyping. So I will not tell a lot today, but uh, you will have a possibility to speak with me and uh, have my advices and, and uh, all, pro all necessary things for prototyping at Riga Motor Museum. So good luck and see you there. Okay, yes, now we're sure that Vence is smiling and try to catch uh, Vence in uh, Riga Motor Museum and uh, make alliance next to the 3D printers. It's very, very funny if you never tried, uh, at least uh, really to, to plan something to print out. It will be like uh, your first experience on that. Uh, maybe I will go through uh, the questions what we receive in, uh, in the comments and then um, um, let's try uh, organizers team to to answer them. If there are uh, some pending maybe questions what we cannot answer, let's agree how we will do it. And the first question is from Anton. Could you open and walk through one us, for example, show us how could we use that data uh, answer? <laughs> maybe you can open something <laughs> while you're preparing. You can check it out maybe, yes? Uh, the, the good okay. example. And yes, yes. We will give you time, but uh, we will try to answer the next questions. When you are ready, just, I don't know, raise your hand and uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, there is Kristaps, a very active participant. He's, he knows something about the events and the smiling, but okay. If I want to process data with any, an, any of the available programs that you mentioned, is there a possibility a mentor can help me process them? If you have no knowledge, like totally no knowledge in data processing, um, uh, like I mentioned, is it makes sense to catch someone who has <laughs> and to consult. Uh, is it possible to, 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 is it doable actually in that time? Because uh, 24 hours is for whole process. Data processing, I would say it could uh, take some two, three hours from that time. And uh, actually, when you will open the data set, you will understand. <laughs> and uh, maybe you chose the topic because I believe um, many of you who will come, you have some idea about what is really triggering you or what you want to work on. And then you can check it out about the data sets. But um, the first uh, warning, if you see that data sets are enormous and you have no uh, in your team uh, data scientist, don't touch it. Uh, if you see that there are few excels, you can try it. You can go for it. Try to do some visualizations. It's the easiest way how to understand the data. But if you really, uh, and there could be helpful our uh, our mentor uh, Ruta. She is good to 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 prepare these visualizations and to and to try to explain together with you because uh, those data are mostly uh, uh, from road uh, road uh, directorate. It's not uh, statistics data, but in any case, she sees the the correlations and she can try to to help you to understand what data shows. This is my first advice uh, about these kind of things. I hope I, I answering because don't uh, lift what uh, if you have no uh, good equipment, <laughs> very heavy things. 
Okay, Anse, are you ready to give some uh, example? No. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Uh, what's the best way to structure our hackathon project timeline to make sure we hit all the main deliverables? I think, Mati, that's uh, for you, the question. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good good uh, good question. Uh, we will address it also when we launch the hackathon on site to give you some recommendation. Maybe we'll even create this kind of draft presentation for uh, slides. Uh, no promises, but uh, how to structure it to, to target the points, uh, very good. Uh, but uh, mostly, I think uh, we can address it from also like how to be the wrong way of doing. <clears throat> and uh, this time, this is one of the maybe first hackathons where we really uh, strongly collaborate with uh, these uh, data authorities. Uh, and it's a very good thing, but there is also a risk because as any researcher knows, especially if you're writing a PhD, it's very easy to get lost in data. You start to find a lot of interesting things. It's like, a, you know, adventure and, and then you find more correlations and then the hackathon is over and you forgot to think about solutions. Uh, and, and that's the, the, the main thing. So when you structure your time, I wouldn't spend more than 30%, 40% on the problem. And in this case, I know there is like these quotes, uh, I think 90% of the time about problem and only 10% on solution. But when you need to create a presentation and when you need to find out and actually, you know, present it uh, in a very quick way, you need to really spend time preparing. Uh, so that's why we made this 24 hour hackathon. But if you look at the calendar, it's almost three days. You know, it starts in the evening of Friday and finishes on the morning of Sunday. So in that capacity, so this 30%, so the first night and in the, and the morning of Saturday, we have uh, this first uh, pitching to, to, to mentors. And, and there we will give you opportunity to do a 30 to one minute pitch, a 30 second to one minute pitch. And there, I, I would say that's the last point where you validate your problem statement and basically get the okay from the data people. Then they say, yeah, this looks like a valid statistics point which you can address, or you can just say the problem like people get you know killed on roads because of visibility you quantify it somehow and then you move forward to this how you address it uh, so that would be this this point and then the next day i would say we have this next presentation which is around four i think this one um, mentors uh, checkpoint there it would be good if you already have your slides uh, and a structure maybe you don't have all the graphics or the visuals maybe you haven't built a prototype if you want to build it but at least from idea how you would structure your presentation it would already be ready and then you can spend the rest of the time to kind of make it make it good polish it because um, a lot of times i have seen the teams have a really good idea really detailed solution but they only have it in their minds but actually putting it on slides and making it understandable for people who maybe will hear you only for these three minutes is sometimes the hardest part. So I would say really think about the presentation and save some space of time for that. But roughly, yes, so the first day and the evening is team making and finding the problem. The second day is working on solution. And the evening of the second day uh, afternoon, you really should start working on presentation and, and don't put it to the back. Uh, that's also good to have teammates. So one teammate can focus on presentation, the others can build the slides, uh, build the content, etc. Very long answer, but <laughs> short. No, 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 it's it's fine. And it's fine. And actually, uh, if you if you feel that you cannot uh, fulfill your tasks, uh, for instance, in the Saturday afternoon, you understand that no, uh, there is possibility to stay overnight. You mentioned that kind of yes. But uh, mm -hmm. you will, you will, you will tell it more. Okay, and yeah, uh, then... one more comment quickly. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what to do if you see that you are failing? Uh, so there, in this point, uh, sometimes you can see other teams that are failing, and sometimes you take two. And, and when you when there will be these demo demo pitches when you pitch to these mentors, and that's why there is this concept competition. So we called it hackathon, but it's in a way like a not a competition but competition because in uh, traffic safety we are not really you know like a cutthroat competing <laughs> for the, we, we are trying to build a safer environment and in in this case, you can join the teams, especially if you see that your team maybe is not that competitive. You can take another team that has a unique skill and join them together. Uh, and and on, that, on that said, that is also something when there are these demo pitches with mentors, see maybe there is a team that has this skill set. Uh, even in competitive hackathons, we have a lot of times exchange participants. So someone is really good at visuals. Uh, we steal that person. We maybe give our person who is very good in 3D modeling and like kind of this trading with skills because let's be honest, having a perfect team where everyone like you have a really good data person really good visuals a really good feature it's really hard to have all of these skill sets so it's it's fine to trade and it's for fine to collaborate and definitely uh, remember that 
Yes, now, and I, uh, I, I think I, I, I forgot to mention, actually, this is uh, the first hackathon when you can cooperate not only with mentors uh, to, to have them in the team, but even with jury. Yeah, jury and... not in team, but jury can consult. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. they can they can cooperate. I mean, yes, mm -hmm. you can consult with jury and they will they they, they cannot say no <laughs> to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, use that opportunity. Uh, the next question is uh, uh, yes, how should we handle dividing tasks within that team to stay organized and efficient? Is somehow related with that, but it's more about uh, inside of the team, Matisse. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. some... uh, so basically, I would say first, uh, see how large is your team. Uh, so in these 24 working hours, yes, presuming you also sleep, sleep a little bit. Uh, so in these 24 working hours, uh, one person cannot do everything. So how we usually do it, we have uh, one person who is captain in the most crucial role. There is no team where everyone is a captain. There needs to be a person who is calling the decisions because it's a short time. It's like a war. You know, you have to really, really prioritize. You have to understand what you are not doing, etc. So first thing, get a captain. And the captain then looks for competences that are needed in your team. So basically, uh, usually there is one or two people who are only working on slides. So just building it together, updating, looking, maybe, you know, these little where the data comes from, like a small line. But if it's not there, their presentation maybe doesn't look that professional, etc. Uh, so getting it all together and making it look good, it's good. So the other person uh, is a person who is walking around. So he's talking with others. He's maybe attending all the activities because that's one of the biggest problems because there are there is a program and there are consultations with mentors, but it doesn't mean that your whole team has to do it. Maybe there is one person who is this kind of walking around doing nothing person, but actually make sure that your team gets all of the <laughs> points of checkpoints. And, and, and the others can continue working. And then the, the rest of the team is mostly, I would say, people who work uh, on, and get, generate content. So content can be graphics, it can be prototypes, it can be maybe you make a small video, uh, but uh, that's basically the people who are like, like if it was a company, they are like workers, you know, they're, they're, they're doing the job, very crucial to have. And, and that depends on your uh, solution or your problem you are tackling. So we, we focused a lot on data innovations, but in categories, you also see that there are vehicle safety innovations. There are a lot of types, like you can build a glow in the dark scooter if you want, maybe it's a paint that is an innovation. So in this case, uh, the road safety is a very wide topic and, and uh, it's interesting yeah, where you will land. So don't get lost on the opportunities. I would say very early select one problem and then worry about it later, just validate it with data mentors and then go forward and start building something either digital or physical. You forgot very, very important uh, role in the team, entertainer and uh, yeah. <laughs> the one who's, uh, who's boosting the mood. And yes, it has to be one or two people yeah. definitely who's doing that yeah. job. Actually, Diana, thanks. Diana also the, gave advice regarding how to organize the work within the team you can check it out in the chat and uh, Christophs, uh, he has uh, one more question about are there any red flags that might signal that project won't perform well in the competition at least you have mm -hmm. huge experience again yeah so uh, another thing uh, just came to my mind when you divide a the team there is also like if you want to get to the most points in each category you can just say like that would be a different approach but you say here we have like six evaluation categories like you know sustainability feasibility and lethal accident reduction rates etc and just say each person is responsible for that category and then you kind of m m match your skills i haven't tried it but maybe maybe it could work uh, uh, so going back to these red flags of course uh, <laughs> like in hackathon you are supposed to be creative and creativity is sometimes doing the wrong thing, not the right thing, because everyone knows how to do hackathons well. The problem is execution, and uh, maybe that everyone is uh, attempting to do the same thing. Um, but, but basically, what we have seen usually fail is, yes, uh, getting really, really stuck on the problem. Uh, so that's something where you kind of start to like go in a circle. And you're like, is our problem well defined? And, and, and then uh, we have seen presentations where in three minutes, the team only talks about the problem and they forget the solution. But remember that the jury is evaluating your solution. Of course, highlighting that there is a problem is always good. Probably they already know this problem exists, yes. Uh, but but uh, don't forget that you have to provide an innovative solution and somehow prove either in data or, or with this prototype, or you can make a little theater skit, but you have to prove that there is a way how this innovation can help reduce little accidents. 
Uh, so that would be one, one red flag. And, and the other red flag is probably not consulting with mentors. And, and, and it, that takes valuable working time out of your team. So it's good to maybe divide these roles in the team. But uh, I seen, and especially if you can catch the jury mentors, that is your opportunity to, instead of having three minute contact time, maybe you have six, 10 or 20 minutes of contact time. And when you will be pitching, the jury member will, be, will remember this conversation and they will see if you took in their advice into consideration, how you addressed it. And when you really are thinking about this point, like teams progress during the hackathon, either you show it in the slides, but then you are using up something from your three minutes uh, to show that we did that and that and that, or you are visible just by consultation. So sometimes you don't even put, need to put in the slides that you had progress because the jury and, and et cetera, through consultations already saw that and they will remember that at the evaluation. So I think this would cover a lot of red flags, but maybe Sigita or others remember other red flags. Oh, I have another <laughs> using prototyping <laughs> corner too much. <laughs> use, use up the whole prototyping corner. Yes, to be excited really, really just with events, yes. <laughs> we had a team, they brought it like a really good at the time. They didn't have anything to tell about it. They just like, we built this. Okay. They're like, good, but what it is, what it does, what's the problem? They're like, well, we built it. <laughs> so, yeah, but I believe also. that they enjoy a lot. The, the, oh, yeah, of the course. End. At the end yes, of the day, it's not yes, about the winning, of it's the journey, of yes. course. But uh, the winning also is nice. <laughs> Yes. No, in, in this case, the, the, the main aim is to, to, to improve the, the safety on, on the roads. And I think you answered the, the last question, what we have here about the pitching time is three minutes, as I understood. Mm -hmm. And really, uh, this is the, the one of the things what I would say that uh, be careful with that, because sometimes jury is so strict that uh, they will not give you time uh, to, 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 to uh, add something. You can be, uh, you can trick them a little. Uh, you can uh, really to uh, somehow to, to, to trigger that they are asking questions. If you see that you cannot put everything in the presentation, just give some hints in the presentation that they are they have to ask the questions. And that's the way how uh, many times I saw that uh, teams uh, get uh, like advantage and uh, regarding the time. I don't know, Matisse, it will be allowed or no, but <laughs> it's good advice. To... We, yes. we aim for at least one question, but there's a comment from Vince. Maybe Vince wanted to also say the hand was raised, yeah. Yes, I really love the sentence from Matisse. It's not about the winning. Matisse, who is going to a competition for just for participating. Maybe it's free food or free drinks, but not just <laughs> participating. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, we, we have to make actually some questioner why you came here <laughs> at the end, maybe. <laughs> yes, at the beginning and not at the end. Okay, Anse, you had you had a very uh, hard task. Did you manage the to task? Something? Yes. <laughs> okay. Was, uh, Do you have um... something? No, I will this, show is, you this is what this is normal do. way how yeah. team will work actually. What Anse did in a few minutes, the team will work. I I don't know for how, how much time. Let's see. Now, uh, oh, yes, yes, of course. This one is real screen. Okay, I have too much screens. Okay, this is a real screen. So, as I mentioned, I'm from social statistics. So, I choose the population by kind of economic activity, uh, we can go in those links. There we have our portal. In our portal, we have data about here, we can see this is about kind of economic activity, gender, age group, and uh, uh, territory. So we go into database, we can do this, uh, take the data from R or Python, but now we go to Excel. So we go to take all the data, we can do that. Um, so we take it to our computer. Okay, why is this? Too much data, okay. <laughs> no, it can't be so. I can't take all the data. 
Okay, I will check this later. Um, okay, we can take uh, part of it. I don't know. We can take not all uh, all kinds. We can take transport and something else. Uh, then uh, not all. And some municipalities in Latvia. Then we can look at the data. We can get it. I will uh, write uh, later about the soul uh, data because you can't get, can't get all. It can don't need be a problem. So we get the data in Excel. So we can my oops, my computer don't want to work with me today. Okay, now uh, here we can see that we take, we take transportation and storage and uh, the idea was uh, if um, kind of transportation and storage change, if it change uh, other and uh, what, which, uh, which kind of uh, kind of economic activity change. So now we can uh, we can calculate the biggest changes. So uh, we can uh, we can uh, this one is census year, and uh, this uh, is last last available. So we can compare this year with census year. It's very hard when somebody is looking on your finger. But why, uh, <laughs> why do you think that we are watching? <laughs> we are busy with our things. Do your thing. Yes, uh, right. Now oh, I, I can comment that answer showing you now how to really uh, in the quick way to to work with uh with uh, yeah, our just... data. Yes. But this is just one one of the data source, of course. We, we of can, course, uh, yes. This you. is yes. Uh, just uh, one example. What we what was asked. Uh, so we we look for um, for uh, okay. biggest. And now we see that uh, how changed the sector related yes. with transport. Transportation, uh -huh. where is uh, our interest about the the, for instance, increase or decrease of yes. uh, of the of the particular sector activity in uh, some regions of Latvia? There is a uh, um, age groups you can uh, analyze who's like uh, employed in what sector, and you can uh, somehow to brainstorming. Uh, you can combine maybe data with this uh, once data, what the data presented last time, or, or uh... um, yes, thank you, Sigita. <laughs> and there are more data about kind uh, in other um, detailization. So you combine those data and uh, get uh, maybe the county where is uh, the biggest changes and uh, then try to understand where those people go in other kind of economic activity so it's really really wide uh, field of uh, yes. uh, for instance we have uh, we have day. <laughs> yes, we have Marup uh, municipality where are uh, registered few logistical, big logistical companies mm -hmm. of Latvia. And as you can understand, if the bases are there and uh, there is airport too, uh, you can uh, just to check it out in the data, what, uh, what are the, the activities there, like uh, transport, logistics, and then you can compare uh, with statistics with uh, heavy road accidents, for instance. And then you understand, okay, trucks are the main reason in that uh, municipality why uh, heavy road accidents happen. Somehow like that, okay? But uh, like Matis Mati, Mati, <laughs> mentioned, uh, like, uh, be curious, but don't go so deep. Because you you will will have the same problem like like with those guys who who spend all the time next to the vents uh, equipment <laughs> with prototyping stuff. Okay, uh, I don't know, Matis. I think uh, we answer all the questions. 
Yeah. So uh, uh, there are something I promised, else. Oh, I promised yes, to do a quick sum up of these uh, questions that were sent in before because we had this and we already have them on the website, but I will do a very quick run through. And uh, one more uh, comment, yeah, on, on this where to find the data. Uh, of course, you can already use data points that were assembled in the previous presentations. So if you see anything that uh, catches your attention, go with that. But one uh, very good advice, I think, is uh, what I think <laughs> it's so good that all startups sometimes use it. And it may be at least at the top level, if you look like, I don't know, like all the, all these speeches, the founder usually like starts with this personal life story thing. Like I, but I think in traffic safety, it can like it, it, a lot of times this emotional connection also works. So, so you can say like, hey, uh, when I was going to kindergarten or something, there was this terrible accident, and and and, and that's why I, I, it's really personally I want to solve this, and it can be a good motivation. And and, and then then you show how it leads to data. You ask like, oh, hey, is it really only indicative to my personal story, or there is a larger context for it? But I think a lot of times if you have seen something or, or maybe something has happened to you uh, that is definitely a good starting point because it's a large field uh, everything we can do to improve race, so road safety works and and then there's just at some point consult with data mentors is there is a quanti when you quantify it is it significant enough like you know but for example i don't know like scooter accidents i think they are quite prevalent you know like so a solution can also be something sometimes simple that doesn't need to be complicated to win. Uh, and uh, now very, very quickly, the most um, common questions asked. Uh, so first the food, yes, there will be food uh, and uh, it will be like the Hecaton type of food. We will have some times where it's more like the food will change after every really few few hours, but it's basically small plates. You come, you get it. And 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 and, and, and the, the only important point is you cannot eat in the exhibition area. So you have to eat in designated zone because it's a museum <laughs> and people would start to worry if you start walking around with, <laughs> with your plate and, and snacking. Uh, although it may be tempting that that is not allowed, but otherwise that the food Will be available at the food station, and and, and it um, maybe it makes sense hmm. to mention that there will be uh, like a customers who will just to want to visit the museum. That's why uh, not in it, our it room, makes sense. but uh, in the museum <laughs> yes. area there will be that during museum working hours. That it makes sense walk so. around with the food because someone can just steal your. Food. Uh, it's also a rule for the museum itself, <laughs> so not only not only okay. protecting our, our food, <laughs> you know, not letting museum participants in the hackathon room. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, but uh, that uh, safety instruction will happen also for people who will be say, staying in the night. We will give a separate instruction what to do at night. There will be a separate exit, etc. So not to trigger the museum uh, safety systems. And then, uh, yeah, reminds a movie, Night in the Museum. So uh, about the hackathon, I think everyone already knows what is a hackathon. It's an idea competition uh, and, and uh, it's open to anyone. So basically students, uh, companies, uh, school, children even. Uh, so we have uh, people from what mostly usually the main audience is students and researchers who participate and sometimes companies that want to develop a new product and want to be inspired by an inspiring environment. So this road safety hackathon is with the topic and focus on uh, reducing lethal accidents in Baltic states uh, with a larger goal to have this road safety day. And November is very particular in Latvia because the roads start to get slippery the time it gets darker. So we decided it's a great time to uh, think about road safety. Uh, so the main goal is basically to create solutions that reduce road fatalities and, and encourage public involvement because a lot of times there are a lot of experts who know everything and then we look at statistics and unfortunately it still uh, is not that good. And then we say, hey, public, now you also can can uh, show and maybe your thoughts are also valuable and good here uh, so teams can be formed during registration before and also during the hackathon and we will give you a cut off line before pitches when it's the last time to put your final uh, team member list that will be uh, Put in the register. Uh, the hackathon takes place in Motor Museum, uh, so basically anyone can participate. You need to be able to speak uh, in English because the hackathon will be, have, be in English language. Uh, you don't need to pay anything. If you win, we will be paying you. Uh, what should you do if you don't have a team? Basically mark that you are looking for a team member and you can mark either you want to be a captain. So we actually have quite a lot of captains, I think at least eight. Uh, people register that they are sure that they want to be captain. That's good. It's good leadership is important. And then uh, during the event, there will be matchmaking activity and, uh, in, in the first day. And also on the mirror board, as I showed before, you can already start putting down comments. And the link for that is uh, a who's a road hack mirror. Uh, what else? Uh, what kind of support? Yes, you can get a mentorship export and there will be a small prototyping station. Uh, you don't have to be present for 24 hours, but it's important to be at the checkpoints. Uh, it is possible to stay overnight, but we will need to register for that uh, when, when the event starts. 
the night time starts at 10. So that's if you wanted to know when is night, it's <laughs> after 10 and there will be food uh, and, and uh, the ideas will be innovated by jury on these five main uh, criteria. And uh, you will have to present in three minute presentations. Uh, the ideas are owned by your team. Also like <clears throat> in, in traffic safety, you don't get patents. So if you want to patent something in future, usually traffic safety innovations are, but of course you can build a company on that. It's just that the patent application is not uh, something that in road safety is being done. Uh, and uh, what are the prices? So the prices are three, two, and one thousand euros, and some specific uh, su um, surprise announcements from the sponsors. Uh, for for they they will be most likely discipline oriented. So there could be special price for discipline. Yes, Andrew, you wanted to comment something? I have some additional things, or maybe Matis went uh, over. But uh, since I'm also one of the organizers, I wanted to say hello to all participants. Uh, we will send some emails today and during the following day, so you will get more information. Just make sure you're registered. Uh, if you registered yesterday, you should have received email and it should arrive. And if, if there's always uh, some kind of problem, you just scroll down in our website. There's this email address for all, the, all participants. It's info at roadhack24.com. And also we have a WhatsApp chat. Uh, so if you already have the link to WhatsApp chat, then you can join there. Uh, I will be writing some announcements but you also feel free to just ask questions uh, there so now when the zoom finishes yeah you have uh, two options either write on whatsapp or write email or wait for the um, this kind of promotional email that arrives uh, once in a few days uh, yeah we will send information about the location uh, all the links uh, and then also yeah please check uh, the transport schedule and so on because yeah we we are welcoming all of you to have some good sleep during the night so you can in the evening go home and uh, yeah the museum we arranged that it will be open a bit longer the exposition usually it closes at six or seven but it will close at 10 o'clock so till 10 p.m. you will have a uh, possibility to walk to a museum as normal but after 10 o'clock there will be limitations which will be uh, more discussed in following days so museum will see how they can arrange these security systems or maybe there will be one door open or like one exit open and you will be able to exit after 10 o'clock but that we will uh, send you uh, in the following days uh, so make sure you get some sleep if you don't get some sleep okay we will have some maybe cushions or pillows where you can lay down for a bit uh, take some quick nap and of course yeah the food and some <laughs> some uh, maybe some sugary drinks uh, to feel you kind of energized um and yeah that's that's it from my side and also if you come with a car there will be some parking spots but yeah just think about that you will be not the only ones uh, in the hackathon event at mu museum there will be regular people coming uh, for the holidays enjoying their weekend so there will be a lot of people in the parking and in the museum so make sure that you yeah, check and we also have we will have this small kind of map or instructions where to put your car where to go or where's the nearest uh, bus stop so it's actually yeah it's in Riga but a bit outside of the center so uh, make sure you plan your uh, trip there and um, yeah good luck and if there's any question yeah you hopefully know where to reach us yeah, finishing right on time. So the short yeah. answer is arrive also <laughs> early and on time. And maybe Sigit, you want to do some closing words. And thank you all. Just yes, few words that uh, good luck to organize our team. And uh, yes, we are ready to support us as we can from our side. And uh, thank you a lot for uh, for uh, cooperation in this uh, non-usual academical breakfast this year. And uh, good luck for everyone who will participate in the hackathon. I hope you will get what you what you want. <laughs> and I wish that. <laughs> okay, see you then soon. Stay safe. Stay safe. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks so much. Bye.